What is up, everybody? Solomon here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Well, I don't want to keep presenting these patents, but I keep stumbling upon them. This is through Goldman Sachs. If you're not aware, Goldman Sachs has about $1.2 trillion in assets under management, about 40,500 employees. I don't think I really need to go in depth as far as how big Goldman Sachs is. This patent directs directly calls out uh, utilizing XRP within a system. Um, it talks about potentially utilizing Bitcoin within within a system as well. And this is just absolutely massive. It talks about foreign exchange transactions and some of the inefficiencies with, within that ecosystem of transactions. It talks, in my opinion, about shadow transactions that deal in Nostro and Vostro or potentially uh, foreign exchange um, remainders that are left over whenever you're transferring money, money across borders. This is entitled Systems and Methods for Updating a Distributed Ledger Based on Partial Validations of Transactions. We can see here that this was first applied uh, in 2015. Now, February of this year just assigned to Goldman Sachs. And in July of this year, the, the publication came out. So I had just stumbled across this because they do not directly mention Ripple, <clears throat> they mention, well, they mention Ripple uh, or XRP, but they call XRP essentially Ripples, uh, R-I-P-P-L-E-S in this document. So I'm going to start going through this real quick here. Um, I guess first and foremost, it just talks about kind of the methodology behind this. And there, there's quite a bit in here. I don't want to get too in-depth into this. I want you guys to be able to find this and maybe read it on your own. But it talks about intraday liquidity requirements. It talks about the need to budget for worst case scenarios. It talks about the use of trusted third parties um, that, that don't necessarily establish predetermined order in which transactions settle over the course of a, of, a, of a given business day. Now, whenever we get into the blockchain and DLT aspect here, and keep in mind here, this is Goldman, this is Goldman Sachs. Um, we are not talking about a, a, you know, a drop in the pan type of an organization here as far as legacy finance is concerned. Intraday liquidity requirements can, can be reduced. By processing transactions in near real time such that transactions settle before new transactions are initiated. In conventional banking systems, this is difficult, if not impossible, to realize because payments need to move through multiple private ledgers and thus incur delays. Cryptographic currencies such as Bitcoin or Ripple maintain transaction records in a single ledger for all participants and thus are able to process transactions in order and fast compared to conventional banking systems. For example, Ripple processes transactions in a matter of a few seconds. Bitcoin in a matter of a few hours. Now, they do go into negatives here. Ne uh, negatives in terms of privacy, etc. So what Goldman Sachs here is presenting in this patent is an interface layer that deals in privacy, um, that deals in other initiatives, I guess I should say, even KYC, things like that. Anonymity, uh, anonymity. Um, anonymity, anonymity, uh, all sorts of stuff here. So we're going to keep going through this while crypto ledger systems such as Bitcoin and Ripple may, um, obfuscate the identity of a specific party by using arbitrary account numbers that are not easy to attribute to a special real specific real world party. Listen to this, um, large financial institutions, for example, central banks cannot rely on such, um, obfuscation alone because the sheer size and volume of of their transactions may reveal their identity to the general marketplace. They're literally talking in this entire patent about integrating the assets that we are that we are holding and why central banks don't want to have their dirty sheets put out to dry uh, for, for the masses to see. Now, more existing, uh, moreover, existing cryptographic transaction systems such as Bitcoin or Ripple lack designed or designated in, in identity checks that aid regulators with uh, policing, anti-money laundering, or AML. Uh, we do know that Ripple certainly does provide aspects of that as well, though. So I think that this is probably a little bit lacking as far as information. As such, there is a need for new systems and methods that can process transactions as swiftly as Bitcoin or Ripple without sacrificing the privacy of par uh, parties involved. Okay, you can see here that my search tab is three of seven. This is not where they stop. They don't say that they're building a new system, but they're not going to integrate these assets. They say they are going to integrate these assets on top of different layers of functionality within Goldman Sachs ecosystem. Um, all right. Now, this is where it gets a little bit juicy here. It, it directly talks about 
validation servers within this new network. This is uh, 130 and 132 may be associated with an asset. So let me find the pictures here that I had. I think it's actually on sheet one. Yeah. So we can see here, this is their entire uh, scheme here. Asset validation servers, 130 and 132. Now we go back. 130 and 132 may be associated with an asset, e.g. either a fiat currency such as dollars or euros or a cryptocurrency such as bitcoins or ripples or any other suitable type of asset such as bonds and operated by the issuing authority of that asset. For example, the central bank for the currency or the bond for the issuer of the bond or certainly utilizing the XRPL and XRP for another asset on top of within this uh, ecosystem here. In such a scenario, asset validation server may ensure that each unit of asset stored in the ledger of the system is backed by a real-life unit of asset held or controlled by a corresponding asset validator. What does that sound like? That sounds like network operators that are operating nodes upon the XRPL um, are certainly, which, which certainly there's, going, there's already banks that are doing that, um, need to have some sort of a balance with XRP. Thus, the ledger may maintain customer confidence by being transparent to regulators that oversee the supply of a given asset without revealing confidential transaction information to the general marketplace. Moving forward a little bit here. I know this is deep verbiage for you guys, and it's deep verbiage for me as well. But if you read through this and you really try to understand the ecosystem, what they're doing here, it's gigantic. Goldman Sachs talking directly about utilizing assets like XRP, like Bitcoin within this ecosystem. And there's another actually photo that's within this that is that is even more interesting to me talk about public key storage talks about private key storage the currencies may include may include all right account information let's start up there may include conventional bank account information and several accounts per asset may be possible the currencies may include fiat currencies such as us dollars or euros but also other types of currencies such as cryptographic currencies for example bitcoins or ripples or any other suitable form of currency or asset And then they talk about, in this slide right here, they talk about integration, essentially, within this right here. Assets, so imagine seeing XRP right in here that talks about the public key. Account information would be your probably public key. Um, and balance would show how many XRP you held. Now look at asset table here, right? And the validators within that asset table. <clears throat> the Fed, the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, KYC validator table, Bank of America, RippleNet, Citibank, Deutsche Bank, P, uh, BNP Paribas, Barclays, HSBC, a lot of Ripple partners in there as well. Massive. And what's really interesting to me is the verbiage that's being rolled out. Uh, now, first and foremost, we do see that there's obviously Goldman Sachs and all of these legacy banking organization members are moving towards DLT and blockchain or at least interfacing with interfacing with them. What's interesting to me though is that June 14th Goldman Sachs states that crypto isn't a viable investment. Well if crypto isn't a viable investment, why the hell are you publishing patents at the beginning of July 2021 stating otherwise and that there is going to be utility for the digital assets that we're utilizing. Crypto isn't a viable investment. Blockchain may become obsolete. They actually talked down here about um, the concerns with Bitcoin's energy consumption, claiming that it could discourage broader, broader adoption. Well, no shit, obviously. So, and last but not least in this, I, I will post this link to this patent. Um, they talk about shadow balances. And if the asset validation server, which, which we do know based on this patent, they talk about a DLT ecosystem potentially being one of these asset validation servers, obviously, determines that the account balance is greater than or equal to the transaction amount for all account holders included in the data message and for all assets it is responsible for, the asset validation server modifies the account balance stored at the asset validation server to reserve a balance equal to the transaction amount. Now, <clears throat> to me, this, this sounds almost like skimming off the top whenever you're dealing in foreign ex uh, exchange transactions where, where there may be fractions of a balance. Um, and maybe something like XRP utility could facilitate the elimination of something like that. Reading down through here, if you're going to read through this, I very much so recommend sticking to the right side as well under claims. It talks about Nostro. It talks about Vostro. It talks about 
liquidity requirements that need to be held on each side of a transaction, why that is inefficient. This is exactly what we've been talking about the entire time. And they are patenting the way to do it. And they're patenting the way that they do it through the legacy system while also interoperating with assets that we know have utility that they will not be able to invent and they can certainly not circumvent in any, thing, in any sort of a platform that they try to develop on their own. Um, I did see that there was an RTGS and CHAPS annual report from about a week ago that came out from the Bank of England as well. What I want to focus on here is that they directly talk about moving the core ledger to complete design or, uh, activity around settlement. Now, we do know in the past, Victoria Cleland, who is a bigwig at the Bank of England, talked about interoperability with distributed ledger technology. The renewed real-time growth settlement system, from what she had stated, is not going to be built on DLT, but it certainly will be able to interoperate with DLT. Interestingly enough, Ripple partner Accenture was the platform of choice to build out the renewed real-time growth settlement system for literally the Bank of England. And they're talking about interoperating with distributed ledger technology and surrounding their, themselves around settlement activity for the core use case of that renewed, renewed real-time growth settlement system. Um, and we can see, obviously, Accenture right here. Unlocking value, blah, blah, blah. This actually is a Santander pitch deck. Rice Bank integrates Ripple to make payments faster and more cost-effective, if you're not aware. Faster to market with Ripple and Accenture directly from Ripple. Uh, Ripple proof of concept. And yeah, it does pre present a little bit of a timeline as well. Following the appointment of Accenture in July 2020 as our technology delivery partner for the re RTGS renewal program, we have moved the delivery phase, which includes ISO 20022 like for like for CHAPS payment messages in June 2022, ISO 20022 enhanced in February 2023, and then a new core ledger for real-time growth settlement in the fall of 2023. I will post a link to this Goldman Sachs patent. They are building this right behind every single person's eyes that is not willing to actually look for this stuff. And they are telling you the opposite. Goldman Sachs is telling you that crypto isn't a viable investment option when they are building to interoperate with cryptos. And it's bullshit and it's nonsense. And more people should see these types of things because it would certainly prepare people for what is about to come. And what is about to come is massive. I hope you guys have a great night.